In the UK, there are three types of amber traffic light. You have red and amber together, which is followed by green. Red and amber means you can get ready to go, but you can't go until it's green. Then there's flashing amber. You get this at the Pelican type of traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing. Flashing amber means you can go as long as the pedestrians who have started crossing have got to the pavement. And then there's amber on its own, which is followed by red. And it's this amber that I think can be dangerous. But what exactly does amber mean? Well, the highway code states, and I quote, amber means stop at the stop line. You may go on only if the amber appears after you have crossed the line or are so close to it that to pull up might cause an accident. So essentially, amber means stop at the line if it's safe to do so. But how much time do you have to stop the car? How long does amber last? And does it vary from speed limit to speed limit? These traffic lights are in a 30 mile per hour zone and the amber lasts for three seconds. I timed it by counting the frames of the video and it's bob on three seconds. These lights are in a 60 mile per hour zone, which I would assume would have a longer amber phase to give traffic more time to stop. But no, this amber was also three seconds long. But to be fair, the speed limit is about to change to 40, so you would be slowing down. What about these traffic lights? This is a 50 mile per hour road and you can easily do 50 here. But amber is still only three seconds long, despite the higher speeds of the traffic. This is a massive problem. You have the same amount of time to stop your car from 30 miles per hour as you do from 60 miles per hour, and you only get three seconds. Three seconds to stop your car from 60 miles per hour. Well, I guess the next question is, how long does it take to stop a car? Well, let's find out. I'm now gonna stop this lightweight car as quickly as possible from 30 miles per hour. That took 1.2 seconds. Bear in mind, this is a sports car with recent high performance tires. An average car with average tires will probably take about 10% longer. This brake test is at 40 miles per hour. And that took 1.6 seconds. Now let's see how long it takes to stop from 50 miles per hour. That was almost exactly two seconds. And finally, the speed limit of the road, 60 miles per hour. That was 2.5 seconds, but you may have noticed the car didn't want to stay in a straight line due to a poor road surface. This can sometimes happen under harsh braking and is one of the many reasons why you definitely do not want to brake this harshly unless it's an emergency. So an amber traffic light on a higher speed limit road is effectively creating a dangerous situation. But those were full on emergency stops. I was braking as hard as I could, the ABS was triggering and I was putting over 1.1 Gs of force. So I was stopping at a force greater than that of gravity. I don't think that's safe. That's gonna cause some crashes if I was to brake that harshly. And also, I can only brake that harshly in the dry. If it was wet, it would take me longer to stop. Also, you've got to consider how long does it take you to react to the amber light? When you see it go amber, you've got to register it in your brain and move your foot from gas to brake. It's safe to say you're probably gonna lose about a second there. So three seconds to stop a car from 60 miles per hour definitely isn't enough, in my opinion. The real question we should be asking is how long does it take to stop a car safely? I'm now gonna stop the car quickly but safely. This is 30 miles per hour. That was 3.1 seconds, so around about three seconds for 30. This stop is from 40 miles per hour. That was near enough exactly four seconds for 40. Let's see how long it will take from 50 miles per hour. That was 4.8 seconds, so close to five seconds for 50. And last but not least, 60 miles per hour. That was 6.3 seconds, so around six seconds for 60, which is a lot longer than you get 
from an amber traffic light. I would like you to bear in mind that I was still braking firmly. I was pulling around about 0.45 Gs of force. If you don't know what that means, that means you're gonna be leaning people forward in their seat, but not to the point where they're uncomfortable. Most people start to feel uncomfortable at around about 0.5 Gs. So I was just below that threshold. And it took me three seconds-ish to stop from 30. You'll find when you're braking quickly but safely, it normally takes about a second per 10 miles per hour. So 10 is one second, 30 is three seconds, 60 is six seconds, etc. But you've got to add that second for reaction time. So really, stopping from 30 nicely is going to take about four seconds, but amber only lasts three seconds. So if you're approaching the traffic lights and you're just over three seconds away and they turn amber, well, you're just over three seconds away. They're going to be red before you cross that line. So you have one of two choices. Brake harder than is comfortable, or should I say than is safe, or run the red light and risk getting points on your license and a fine. And also risk just being dangerous from running the red light. And at 60, don't even get me started, you still only have three seconds. So if you're just over three seconds away from that traffic light and it goes amber and you're doing 60 miles per hour, you're not gonna make it unless you do a full on emergency stop and you're in a good car with good tires. I was driving a sports car with high performance tires in dry, warm conditions to stop at that rate. Most of the time, you're not gonna make it. You're certainly not gonna make it at safe braking levels, at less than half a G of braking. Unfortunately, I don't actually have a solution to this problem. Usually in my videos, I have a problem and I have a solution, but there's no real way around this. There is one way around it though, but you'd probably fail your test. And that would be to slow down at green lights in case they changed. But if there's no reason to slow down, you will fail. I've had people fail before for this. If you're turning left at traffic lights, yeah, you need to slow down, even if it's green, so you can make the turn or turning right, or if there's a queue of cars ahead or a hazard, slow down. But if you've got a straight, clear bit of road on a green light, you should continue at the speed for the road. I think the only real solution to this problem is to change how long amber stays on for and to vary it for the speed limits. Currently, three seconds for 30 miles per hour is a bit too short, but it's not disastrous. I have to brake a bit harder than I want to to stop if the lights turn amber when I'm at that inopportune moment where I'm too far back to go through, but not far enough back to stop nicely but at the higher speed limits, 40, 50, and 60, three seconds really isn't enough. Let me know in the comments your opinions. Do you disagree with me? Do you think the system's fine, amber lasts long enough, and I'm complaining about nothing? Or do you agree with me? Do you have points on your license because you've gone through a red light when you felt it was too dangerous to stop? You didn't have enough time to stop. Or did you fail your driving test because you stopped at an amber light and the examiner said you should have continued through or the other way around, you went through and the examiner said you should have stopped. You can't always win. When pupils ask me, what should I do in that critical situation when I'm too far back from the amber light to make it through, it will be red by the time I get there, but I'm too close to stop in time. The only answer I can give is you're gonna to have to brake harder than is safe so that you can stop by the line without running a red light. Well, I hope this video helps you understand the problem even though I haven't given you a solution. The solution would be to get Amber to stay on longer, but I wouldn't know where to start to make that happen. But if it helps you understand the problem, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, check out the links to collingwoodandconfused.com. With Collingwood, if you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, they're there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy, which takes away a big stress from the owner of that car. And via the link at the moment, it's up to 35% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, 
check out the link to confuse.com. You fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back to compare who's cheapest, and you can change your car on that quote as many times as you like, which is a really useful tool when you're trying to figure out how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the links doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.